All amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update on the current situation here in Spain, day 414 of the current situation. And there's lots of stories around today about Spain in the foreign press, so we'll have a look at some of those in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that bought merchandise and a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your continuing support and helping me make these videos. Now, let's get into the news. And as I said, there's lots of stories around today about Spain in the foreign press. It's always good to see what some of these international publications are saying about Spain. Get out of that Spanish bubble every now and again. And the first story we're going to look at today is about the Madrid elections that are coming up this coming Tuesday. As we can see from this headline from Al Jazeera, Spain Trump like Madrid governor set for election win. Isabel Díaz Ayuso has kept bars open during the pandemic, winning praise among businesses who have named a beer after her. Described by some as a populist, she has a tough-talking public speaking style that seems to thrive on controversy. Her pinned tweet ahead of the May 4 vote screams communism or freedom. Since taking over as the PP's regional leader in 2019, Ayuso has gained plenty of airtime with outlandish claims such as that traffic jams at three in the morning in Madrid form part of the city's cultural identity and that when it comes to air pollution in the capital, nobody has died from it. So according to Al Jazeera there, Spain has its own Trump-like politician, Isabel Díaz Ayuso, who is up for re-election on Tuesday. And believe me, when you talk to people in Madrid about this politician, she really divides opinion similar to Donald Trump. Now Spain has finally submitted its EU recovery fund spending plans to Brussels, and although the government is upbeat about the plan, some people are skeptical. As we can see here in this headline from the Financial Times, Spain submits EU recovery fund spending plans. Some economists say government's forecast of likely boosted growth is too optimistic. Spain has sent Brussels its landmark plan to spend 140 billion from the EU coronavirus recovery fund, as Pedro Sánchez's government seeks to respond to criticism that it has centralized control control over the money and that the immediate economic impact may be less than hoped. The Socialist Prime Minister argues that the plan, formally submitted for EU approval on Friday, will transform the economy's economy in the same way that Spain's entry into the European community did in 1986. So is it a revolutionary plan to transform Spain's economy? as the Prime Minister thinks, or is it too optimistic? Time will tell. Now, the controversial AstraZeneca vaccine is back in the headlines today. As we know, last Friday, the Spanish government was going to decide whether to vaccinate people with the second dose of AstraZeneca or with another vaccine, but they decided to postpone their decision for another month. As we can see here, Spain extends AstraZeneca dose gap to 16 weeks beyond EU-approved limit. Spain is extending the gap between the first and second doses of AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine to 16 weeks for people aged under 60, the government said on Friday, going beyond the 12-week maximum interval approved by European authorities. The extension gives authorities more breathing space to determine the safest way to administer the vaccine, the health ministry said. Spain initially gave AstraZeneca shots to essential workers aged 18 to 65 before allowing only people aged over 60 to receive the vaccine due to concerns about blood clots in younger people. So the government here in Spain deciding to go beyond that 12-week recommendation by European authorities on AstraZeneca, and this unfortunately now is beyond a joke. With the country looking to have 70% of the population vaccinated by the end of summer, without AstraZeneca it's going to be very, very difficult. And now the problem of vaccination logistics is rearing its ugly head. As we can see from this headline, the logistical challenge of vaccinating 18 million Spaniards on vacation. The health emergency caused by the coronavirus reached its turning point worldwide at the end of 2020. The development of vaccines was a milestone for science and humanity, which looked forward to the only approved solution against the virus for the time being. Now the problem is different. To be able to immunize as many people as possible as soon as possible in order to contain the advance of the disease and also to alleviate the very serious damage caused by the pandemic to the economy. But as we all know here in Spain, the seriousness of the pandemic has been relegated because of politics. The idea in some other countries around the world with a similar health crisis has been to vaccinate people as soon as possible. But here in Spain and the European Union, unfortunately, that has not been the case. And the longer this goes on, the more obstacles that seem to get in the way. And that challenge that we saw there of vaccinating 18 million Spaniards when they're on holidays over the months of July and August is going to be a big one. Now let's have a look at a summary of the health situation 
population in Spain. We can see the accumulated incidence rate for the last 14 days now at 229. There are currently 9,668 people hospitalized around the country with COVID. There are 2,308 COVID patients currently in ICUs. The amount of COVID-related daily deaths is now sitting at 136, down 14% on previous data. And when it comes to vaccines, we can see that 9.3% of the population have completed their vaccinations and 24.3% of the population have received at least one dose. And if we have a look at the map on the left, we can see that there are still three autonomous communities here in Spain at an extreme risk level, Madrid, Navarra and the Basque Country. Now with the summer months here in Spain just around the corner, a lot of the coastal resorts are starting to prepare for the influx of tourists. But one British newspaper is asking the question, is Spain ready to open its borders to British tourists? Joker's Bar on the seafront in Magaluf lies quiet these days, but very soon its usual patrons could be gearing up to return. Like elsewhere in Spain, this resort in Mallorca is desperate for the return of British holidaymakers after the country's tourism sector was hard hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. It is not yet known whether Spain will be on the UK government's green list for quarantine-free travel from May 17th, when the ban on foreign travel is to be lifted for travellers in England. However, one factor which will be key will be the progress of Spain's vaccine rollout, as the British government uses this as one of its major indicators when classifying countries in its traffic light system. But even if Spain does not get the green light from the UK government for tourists to travel next month, there is still hope that Britons may be allowed to travel to popular holiday regions with low coronavirus contagion rates. Balearic Islands and the Valencia region, which includes the Costa Blanca, have coronavirus contagion rates of 59 and 44 per 100,000 people respectively, compared to the national rate of 229, according to Thursday's Spanish Health Ministry data. So will Spain or won't Spain be on the UK's green list? As we saw there, health data varies depending on where you are in the country. Places like the Balearics and Valencia have relatively good health data at the moment. But if we talk about places like Andalusia, Madrid and some of the regions in the north of the country, the situation is not so good. So is Spain ready to open its borders to not only British but other tourists as well? What do you think? And finally, a story about Brexit and some of the problems that it's causing for residents living here in Spain. As we can see from this headline from The Express, Benidorm expat slams impossible residency requirements for Spain post-Brexit. Relocating into the sunshine of Spain is a popular move for Britons of all ages, whether that is for retirement, a new job or simply for a fresh start. However, since Brexit came into force, rules surrounding freedom of movement between the UK and the EU have seen some changes. Crucially, Britons now need to apply for specific visas in order to be allowed to relocate to the country. According to one expat, this new rule isn't only impacting those with plans to relocate, but is also causing major issues for those already living in Spain. With COVID causing a complete collapse in tourism, forcing most bars to lay off staff, issues around residency has become a major problem, this person said. The coronavirus pandemic put a stop to travel and saw the resort's annual tourism figures plummet. Coupled with the impact of government-ordered lockdowns across the country, numerous businesses fell into administration or were forced to lay off staff, many of whom were expats. In most cases, in order to obtain a permanent residency in the country, Britons will need to be able to prove that they are in employment or are bringing in a certain income. So a Benidorm resident there not happy with the resident requirements now in place post-Brexit. And let's be honest, Brexit has most likely thrown a spanner in the works for a lot of people that were planning to come and live or work in Spain. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Mike Van Bike. I just traveled from Switzerland to Spain on the way back to Portugal. Your mask rules are mental. I see people wearing a mask in the street and walk into a bar and take the mask off. Then when they leave the bar, they put the mask back on for the outside. Why do people put up with this SH1T? Yeah, Mike, thanks for the comment. And to be honest, you could get the impression that the mask rules here in Spain are a bit mental, especially compared with some other countries around the world. I think everybody understands that when you are in a crowded space or if you go into a shop or a bar or a restaurant, you need to put your mask on. But as you said there, sometimes that is the opposite case here in Spain. When people go into a restaurant, the first thing they do is take their mask off when they sit down, even though I don't think that is the correct behavior, but I'm not really sure because rules change constantly. And then as you said, when they leave the premises, they put their mask back on. Now I can understand the mask rules for wearing them outside if you're in a very crowded city. And let's be honest, a lot of the cities here in Spain are very, very crowded, or they can get very, very crowded, especially at certain times of the day. And 
if you go to some of the main shopping areas, you'll see a lot of people in the street. So I can understand that you might need to put a mask on in that situation, or if you go to a concert or somewhere where there are a lot of people gathered. But if you are out and about in the fresh air and there are not too many people around and you can maintain a safe distance between yourself and another person, I don't see the point of having to wear a mask. But it is the law and the majority of people do follow that rule. And maybe you're right, it is a little bit mental. One here from Anthony. Sorry, Stuart, I have no intention of holidaying in Europe this year. Too many COVID cases still, and the EU has been very critical of everything British, even rubbishing the AstraZeneca vaccine, which is probably the leading lifesaver from COVID. Yeah, Anthony, thanks for the comment. There does seem to be an anti-EU feeling in the UK at the moment. I don't know how widespread it is. I don't know whether it's a general feeling or only a certain amount of the population feel this way, but I do get the impression reading some of the comments on this channel and some of the other stories that I have seen on the internet in recent times. Some of the British tabloids, like the one we saw before, The Express, are really pushing this anti-EU sentiment, even calling people to boycott all things European and to avoid holidays to places like Spain this year. But as you mentioned there, the health situation in the EU or some of the European Union countries is also going to be a determining factor on whether or not people decide to take a holiday abroad this year from countries like the UK. But even if people like yourself, Anthony, decide to stay at home this year. I'm sure that many other people will decide to take a holiday to one of Spain's many costas this summer, providing that Spain is on the green list. One here from Broadsword, people often say they want more good news stories, Stuart, but when publications report good news, they get accused of being propaganda outlets or of advertising or of promoting fake agendas. People say they want more good news, but in truth, they want to not be told the bad news. Yeah, Broadsword, thanks for the comment, obviously referring to another comment we saw the other day from somebody complaining that there's not enough positive news around at the moment and that everything is too negative. And you're right, when the press do report good stories, they get accused of those things that you mentioned there. And I think if you look at the majority of news outlets around the world and the stories that they put out, it is clear to see that bad news sells. And one of the reasons people like to read bad news could be that people like to compare themselves with other people, and if somebody else is worse off than them, it makes them feel better. I don't know, I'm just putting it out there. One here from Desto, hello Stuart, I'm so happy I came across your updates. I'm moving to Spain in a few months with my wife, Spanish native, and I'm a little overwhelmed, but your videos are making me feel a bit less anxious. I was wondering if you had any advice on Spanish language schools in Madrid. Also, we are planning to live in Alcorcón. Any advice on first-time apartment renting? Thanks. Stay awesome. Yeah, Desto, thanks for the comment. And I can imagine that you could be feeling a little bit overwhelmed by your upcoming move to Spain. Quite a big change, I imagine, moving from the States to Spain. And as you said there, you're planning to live in Alcorcón on the outskirts of Madrid. When it comes to renting an apartment here in Spain, I can't give you a lot of advice because I don't live in an apartment anymore. I went through that process a few years ago and it was a little bit hit and miss. There are some good places. There are some bad places. So you have to be careful. But my only advice would be to look around and not accept the first thing that you find. Try to find a place that has a lot of natural light because there's nothing worse than being stuck in a place that doesn't have that. Check out the neighborhood and make sure that it has a lot of services that you'll need, that it's close to public transport as well. And I'd also recommend getting a place that is close to a big park so that if you feel a bit too cooped up in your apartment, you've got a nice big open space where you can get out and enjoy nature. And when it comes to Spanish language schools, I don't really know too much about that because I learned Spanish before I came to the country. But in a city like Madrid, there is an abundance of Spanish language schools. But I'm sure that in the community, there are people that can also help you with those questions that have a better idea than me about those two topics. So please leave that advice in the comment section and help Desto with the move to Spain. And finally, one here from Frank. Hey, Stuart, good news for you. Time to break for the border, the Portuguese border. Yeah, Frank, thanks for the comment. As we saw the other day, the border between Spain and Portugal has opened again. I think yesterday was the day that it reopened after having been closed for the last few months. And I'm sure that lots of people that live close to that border between Spain and Portugal have made the trip across in the last day or so. But I'm going to wait a little bit longer, even though I would love to get to the beach there in Portugal to breathe that Atlantic air. Maybe June, maybe Maybe July, maybe a little bit sooner, but I will definitely be heading to Portugal sometime in the future. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.